Ni hao. In the previous lesson, we saw how shift registers could be used to build a serial adder. In this video, we will begin the lengthy process of designing control circuitry to process the data, rather than our manual clicks of input switches. I only show these next two slides as a reminder. If you have not watched and understood the previous lesson, stop right here and go back. It is important that you know what each phase of this table means and how the bits move through each of these registers. It is also important that you understand how that table connects with this circuit. Recall how, when we operated this circuit, it required a series of steps that needed to be carried out in order. If something occurred out of order, such as inputting the incorrect data or flipping the clear switch in the middle of addition, then the whole process was stymied. That required quite a bit of focus on our part. What would be very helpful is a control circuit that does the work for us. The idea is for us to simply plug in the numbers we want to add, press the start button, wait a short time, and read the answer. That is easier said than done. This is the complete circuit that we will build up to over the next few videos. The serial ladder is contained in this one small device down here. My fear is that by showing you this now, you will be too intimidated to go on. My hope is that by seeing this, you will realize that careful attention needs to be paid each step of the way. Don't worry, we can do this. The only way we have a chance of piecing this all together is with an overarching framework. What you see here is called the data path control model. It can be applied to any finite state machine. We didn't really need it in the FSMs of previous lessons because the data being processed was so simple, such as dropping a gumball if four pennies had been deposited. But now, with the more involved data path of the serial ladder, this framework is vital. The data path unit can be defined as the circuit where input data gets processed into output data. In our current example, the serial adder device is the data path. We plug in two 4-bit numbers as the input data. We pull out the sum as the output data. In between, those shift registers and full adder do the processing. The control unit can be defined as the circuit that tells the data path what to do. This was your job in the previous lesson. You, as a human, had to think about what step comes next, then flip the input switches to the appropriate values at the right times. The control unit is always a sequential circuit, or a finite state machine. It must be because of this feedback loop. Past inputs help determine what control decisions are made next. The data path unit could be a combinational or a sequential circuit. In most cases, like our current example, it is sequential. Let's better illustrate the meaning of these arrows, quite literally, by showing some doodles related to a different example, a construction crew building a house. The input data would be the raw starting materials and tools, like hammers, concrete, and shovels. The external signals would be commands telling the control to behave in some way. A very common one is a signal to begin work once all the input data is ready to go. This is represented by the big boss sitting in his office telling the crew to start building. The control signals are the commands from the control unit to the data path. This is where the foreman on the job barks instructions to the building crew. He isn't doing the digging or the hammering himself, but his instructions cause the other workers to do things in the right order. Status signals are how the data path sends feedback to the control. Once the building crew finishes digging the trench, they let the foreman know so they can get the next instruction. You can see how, in a multi-step process, this feedback loop could be used frequently. Finally, the output data is represented by this lovely home. The job is complete. The input materials have been converted into their final product. What happens next? 
Everybody just sits around and waits for the big boss to tell them when to start on the next house. That will wrap up this video. This was a very top-down view of the data path control framework. In the next video, we will use this model to ask design questions for our serial adder.